Welcome to Tidbit Talkin'. This series is just spewing out assorted thoughts about boatloads of entertainment media. Some ideas are serious, others not so much. There will be spoilers for the series currently featured, but generally only vague references to any other connected ones in a shared universe. Now, with all that out of the way, here we go. The dream-having, subconscious-mimicking CPU part of Zero is all that remembers his long-gone creator Ancient Albert because every other bit got altered by Dr. Kane's repair job too much. An oddity such as a Sleepy Time movie generating new debt would only ever originate from, or even merely be tinkered with by, true robotics-focused geniuses like Light and Wily, not an archaeobotanist. Sigma only infects Dragoon and the General directly, with that latter fellow being totally unaware of what's really happening. With his army following orders based off a thought thing that's already war-focused, mental slippage was perhaps not entirely noticeable. Especially considering that since his mind not morphing from completely not by concern to war crazy, instead only shifting towards combat passion in a different way, might make the man himself resist things somewhat. This would lead to varying levels of digital disease deals controlling soldiers, and then merely eating their beloved commanding officer's orders, which in turn would cause much different behavior while fighting the hunters. Throwing those normally only basically rabid machine battling folk into a very off base mentally slash emotionally sort of state. The color changes Thomas's technological troopers tap into when utilizing stolen weaponry must be a thing so their creator knows when an unavoidable fight is going on simply by glancing at them. Copies like Base keep this up because such people are cocky enough that they believe winning can occur when crazy battle movement revealing hoopla is thrown into the mix. More advanced robot masters say red ones that mostly develop their own techniques based on opponent observation instead of plain old ability theft would forgo these shade shifts since the combo potential involved with such action means attempting a period might be a bit too much. Wasting loads of power on a colorful light show would be really poor design after all, at least when all it accomplished was hurting people's eyes. Given that most cases of violent contraption behavior during this time period arose from a computerized affliction, it makes sense for Repliforce to be trained on hastily adapting and making impossibly quick battle plans once things suddenly take those tricky worst turns. And some more precise action shenanigans going on here, like Magma Marshal Master making Sky Lagoon crap right as a distress call answering hunter arrive. This dragon mechanoloid, which is possibly vehicular in nature, must be a kinda souped up animal themed war machine that serves as some sort of pride symbol slash mascot for the appropriately named force. This death trap what's it is probably normally a hanger for stuff like that aforementioned mythical beast thingamajig. Usually it only open and shut up at the very top, but an improvised deadliness was implemented suddenly by applying this feature to every other part once wartime began. Light places the latest leg upgrade here because he thinks it would be funny. Also, he might believe the heat from those hover thrusters could make digital erected silk unravel, just like its more organic counterpart. The ultimate armor was developed because technique teaching Thomas got pissed. Magma Dragoon started using Street Fighter moves too, and wanted something immensely powerful and spammable to punish this grandiose offense. Also, he didn't make a more traditional skill direct counter thing to handle said crime because he's been enamored with Marvel vs. Capcom lately, and there's worry of trademark infringing or something. The secret jump Jungle weapon is sufficiently protected by hiding slash guarding it with those nifty electric webs. Robo bees would exist for taking care of illegal honey collecting outfits. Repliforce would be involved with such junk because protecting trade is very helpful for maintaining good governmental relations or what have you. This questionable level of public knowledge surrounded hidden cannon was probably meant to blast the general space space out of orbit just in case someone else managed to take it over. It probably was only halfway finished at most though. Who and Boo is useful against them because it slices all eight limbs at once. Twin Slasher acts a bit similar, but with primarily aiming at both main body sections instead. These pincer drill death trap deals are for collecting and reaching whatever splits researching. Professor Shroomhead's the only individual not trying to hide that wacky Sigma connection because his scientific method fueled brain circuits are extra contrasting with shockingly sudden violence craziness said Maverick virus forces into one system. Anyway, his noggins generally overworked from pulling all nighters left and right, so adding extra external electricity simply fries him outright. What? 
he protects the goods because his knock projectile claw weapons are the least likely Repliforce held one to accidentally destroy them. Zero's battle maneuvers work extra well against many different bosses because he develops slightly different variations for each technique depending on the situation. Speaking of which, Kuin Boo takes on this beastie boy handling because his large leaps aren't quite suited for fighting tight double jump wielding foes. Somewhat similar, Ground Hunter gives him a run for his money because slippery landmines ain't so avoidable when you're all conspicuously big and constantly hopping around. The defense ramping up and gig attack enabling armor piece is stationed here because Light still pissed this guy stole his fighting game special move idea. Cooking combat connoisseurs actually resisting the Sigma virus quite a bit. That whole hiding out in a volcano after taking down Sky Lagoon deal is really so we can make sure there aren't any civilians, be they fleshy or metallic, around if full-on berserk modes come about. On top of simply being far away from society, the dramatic battleground setting, something the foe in a martial arts movie might choose, helps him resist things more by creating a different false mindset to get absorbed into first before viral junk takes over. Part of that whole personal play would be letting right armor get excess nearby, because being really cocky and show-offy is one character trait his self-selected rival role strongly possesses. Once that vehicle is out of the way, Chipuga shakes him up because it attacks his somewhat unguarded midsection. Sorta of samey, whirling winds both pull him down and throw things off balance. X can't correctly copy the Hadoken or Shoryuken from Dragoon because he only sees them as abilities that are worth using when they are passed on by a Ryu-studying dear old dad. resistant to everything but basic buster blasts because he's thoroughly familiar with each special weapon that comes from those currently fighting alongside Repliforce. And with said knowledge, the dude developed subtle movement-based defensive postures, which work more or less perfectly. Remains of earlier ice roids are resting here because Walrus wishes to study them and make sure he doesn't get defeated by a relatively unarmed hunter, as rumors suggest they did. Base Extra Life Count Enhancer thing was made by Dr. Kane to counter dreadful thoughts that were born of worry back when it looked like Zero couldn't handle more than one mission. In addition to getting all heat hampered on account of being cold conditioned, that whole barely bendable ballsy bigness situation he's got going on makes upward moving forces really intolerable or whatever. After getting knocked up in such a hot manner, he attempts to avoid further burning sensations by a desperately clinging to the ground. This Achieve Good Ratings Get Certain Nifty Prizes deal may be the result of some resistance against Maverick Virus hijinks going on within Cyber Peacock's mind. Perhaps once the feathery fabrication realized sanity slippage was occurring, he created some sort of hidden memory partition that contained an automatically triggered society assisting backdoor program, which kicked in when helping capable folks showed up and everything. On that note, evil thought consumed bird brain hat would want to steal this infinite energy producing helmet part for self serving scientific study stuff. Pleasant poultry particle blood parts, on the other hand, would want X to have it back. Thus, it got thrown into that recently mentioned Deadly Game Show Marathon once in. Yeah, overheating's bad for computer crap, particularly examples which teleport to random spaces in the air, as hotness likes lingering in such places. Tech typically doesn't handle energy sources that were considered during design periods either, like soulful silhouettes. Not to mention that deducing somebody has limitless potential and then witnessing them unleashed a rapidly flashing multicolored doppelganger has really got to throw one off when it comes to reality calculating mental preparation nonsense. Assorted amplified attack arms are located here because Light realized facing down a Sky Brigade with wide firepower variety might demand busters bringing beefiness blatantly beyond bare minimum. Aiming laser hits him in the exact right way at an extremely precise moment and ruins his flight packed combat style. Rakuhoha renders him useless because his bulky, bull bit built body uses very specific fuel in order to operate that hole soaring through the air while still constantly blasting section laser weapon situation he's got going on. Get 
a ride chaser gets used here because Hunter HQ is detecting Mr. Turbofish moving all over the place nonstop throughout this city. Stingray's wing fins and tail get stuck together while frozen, and their proximity to one another makes that first missed jet burn up the other thing more than a little when thawing occurs. Zero develops somewhat less techniques than usual this go-round because the daring dude's distracting dream have hindered battle inspiration associated creativity somewhat. One's main energy reserve and those nifty sub-tanks fill up simultaneously now because somebody like a redeemed Dr. Doppler must have provided plans for substantially upgrading said stuff in certain ways, which unfortunately didn't include anything related to the maximum getting reached sooner. Double doesn't deal with a similarly named Cyclone because getting blown back and forth with wind reminds him of the different way his weight is distributed in that spine disguise form he really loathes. Iris lets go of her power core diamond deal after a bit because the poor situation stuck woman realizes how much she really doesn't want to fight Zero. The general's weirdly slotted in head can't take twin slashers because force coming from two directions isn't so tolerable without a neck to provide last second almost dodges. Repliforce's whole high command has trouble against Ku and Boo because the respect for Wily's greatest creation as a warrior simply leaves him all off guard since his supreme skill with such an impractical maneuver doesn't really garner any response other than whoa from such folks. Flower Girl goes through something kind of similar but with love instead of battle respect. That green liquid and jet Stingray's rematch must be some sort of artificial water substitute his robot army buddies were working on, just in case their new nation in space wound up being crowded somewhere without that natural version around. Wily's virus decides to transfer into Sigma because the thing figures he can spread it much more easily with that whole clearly a respected hero aura he's got going on. People are a lot more likely to casually approach an idol than some raving stranger after all. Second suit Sigma can't counter Goon Boo because wielding this particular farming tool as a weapon is actually rather tricky. Also, he's not fond of lightning web because that just mentioned improvised energy armament gets overloaded from being near them. Of course, first form frailty is just because escaping excess heat in those robes ain't really feasible. The Nova Strike strong gets everything because being invincible means there's no concern for X regarding strain from coming into contact with not himself located metallic junk and other assorted typically unavoidable laws of physics crap. Enemies still gotta worry about that though, hence they all inevitably end up worn down when our hero plows through them relentlessly. Final Sigma has problems with quite a few Zero techniques because he's all flustered after remembering what it was like to be beaten by a raging Red Ripper so badly during that first encounter. This greatest number ever is remembering Wily more now because of the him originating virus growing much stronger. It's probably a kind of built-in data backup whatnot that's kicking in because an AI Albert is experiencing some sort of plans are incredibly close to being finished overwhelming emotional simulation deal that drives him toward revealing every little thing. Endings are a pain, but all of you are fantastic. See ya.